Hey, good af- good afternoon and good morning to everyone who is listening, or maybe good night if there are anyone who is from uh, the US. Uh, welcome to Indonesia is not all about batik, textile tripping with uh, Lewa Pardomoe. So yeah, before we start, uh, probably I would like to go through some uh, house rules and a little introduction. So uh, just to take note that this video is recorded for future publication and publicity purposes. If you do not want to be seen, uh, do let us know. And for the comfort for everyone who's listening in, do mute your microphone and turn off the video to save on bandwidth. And there will be a Q&A at the end of the session and Lewa might uh, prompt for any question and uh, answer in between of the presentation as well. Uh, in the meantime, uh, do feel free to chat, uh, sorry, do add on any questions or comments in the chat box as well. And yes, uh, welcome again. And my name is Tony from Anert Gallery. Uh, if this is the first time you are uh, seeing me, so I'm Tony from Anert Gallery, which is a play on our, an art gallery. So I'm based in Singapore and we are trying to promote uh, Indonesian textile art of batik and tenun in variety of different angles, uh, not just cultural and heritage, but also design, sense, technology, just being nerdy about it. So we do a lot of like different uh, experiences, including seminars, workshops, talks, art exhibitions, and textile trips. Unfortunately, because of the global pandemic, we are unable to do that. And I was talking to Lewa the other day, and hmm, maybe we should bring people on a virtual trip all around Indonesia and introduce the different textiles and the variety that we have because they are just simply too many. So like myself, Lewa is an Indonesian who is based in Singapore and by day he is a TV producer. He loves to travel and he loves to collect Indonesian textiles and other artifacts. Since 1998, Lewa has collected more than 300 textiles from various cultures and islands in Indonesia. If you have a chance to visit him in his house in Singapore, it is a very wonderful uh, treat for the eye. And he is a passionate advocate of Indonesia is not all about batik. And of course, to note, Lewa spends too much time on Facebook. Probably you can find him there most of the time. And he hates lousy Indonesian restaurants in Singapore, which you can talk about later. And without further ado, let me pass over the screen to Lewa. Thanks, Tony, for the introduction. Uh, selamat pagi, selamat siang, selamat malam. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, perhaps. So thanks so much for 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 joining us today. Uh, as Tony said, too many. So I think yeah, it, it can be quite overwhelming because it's for me as an Indonesian, it's also quite tough. It's hard to understand my own country because of the diversity, and the 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 challenge of living in the other part, this part of the world, is that despite the size of the country, and many people still do not understand. Uh, Indonesia, and it's, it's, I've, I've heard uh, 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 colleagues and friends commenting that, oh, actually, I don't realize that Bali has its own language. Yes, Bali has its own language, basically. And I'm intrigued by the title of the, the program itself. Uh, Indonesia is not all about batik. That's true. And I'm sure Tony is from Bali, but I don't think he will mind me saying this, that Indonesia also is not all about Bali, for example, uh, this is a very uh, quintessentially a picture of Bali, which I took a few years ago in Ubud, uh, the, the, the temple at Lotus Cafe. So it's given an idea that, yes, there are so many things about Indonesia that we need to study, we need to learn, to be passionate about as Indonesian also as, as, as those who have interest in the country. Um, let me take you to another place, that's Bali. That's Bali. And then look at this. This is a picture of me on the island of Rincha, of, of Flores, where Komodo dragons roam the island. Um, that's one of the most memorable uh, uh, trips that I had a few years back, that Rincha. If you go further east, you may end up in this island, Saparua. Uh, in the Molucas, it's a beautiful 17th, I think 17th century uh, a Dutch fort. Look at the blue, the blue sea. It's very, very peaceful there. And if you want to try something different, you can go to another island, which I 
did a few years back also, a trip to central Kalimantan, a cruise along the river. You could see, I spent a night in the boat. It was very, very nice, very nice food also. And on, on the way to this part, and we, we passed the orangutan sanctuary. If you want to see Java, uh, there are many temples, 8th century, 9th century temples in Java, Borobudur uh, UNESCO heritage site, Prambanan also, and this is one of my favorite temples, Plausan in, in Yogyakarta. So again, Indonesia is not all about Bali. You don't mind, Tony, right? You saying that? Um, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me show you, let's start this conversation and I wanna show you this particular map, which I got from an antique shop in Hong Kong. It's a 1950, it was issued in 1954. So you can see the country of Indonesia, those islands, uh, you, you see Australia uh, below that, and then continental Asia, the Philippine islands, And to put things into perspective, let me show you this. Okay, Indonesia, see that the chain of islands there? In, it's a pink color, it's almost pink. So if you see that, 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 that the map, play, uh, play, uh, take a closer look. And you, if, if you place that map in Europe, it will cover the distance between Dublin and Moscow. And if you place that map in the US map on top of it, it will cover the entire country. So it, it may give you an idea about the size of the country. So since it's so big, it consists of 17,000 islands, you can imagine that uh, it's not uh, the diversity too. So this is a cultural map uh, from the same book. Okay. Uh, for those who are not Indonesian, but even my Indonesian friends, sometimes they don't know which islands are that, which is located where, which is quite amazing. But anyway, <laughs> take a look at, the, at this map. You see Sumatra on your left, and then Java. Yeah. You see Jakarta, the capital. This is old spelling, yeah, because it was issued, it was published in 1954. Java. And then above Java is Kalimantan. Uh, it's Borneo Island, but we call the whole the whole island Kalimantan actually, and next to it is Sulawesi. Below Sulawesi, you see a chain of islands from Bali to Timor. Please take a closer look at that. Bali, Lombok, Sumbawa, Sumba, Flores, Timor. And next to Sulawesi, you see a chain of islands, the Molucas, Seram, uh, Ambon. Try to memorize Ambon because it will come back to you later. And you will see that Irian Barat, which is now Papua. So the island of New Guinea, uh, now the province of Papua. Hold on, yeah, let me close this. This is the full map, which is very, very interesting. You see some pictures there? Yeah, a batik maker on the uh, left top corner of, of, of the, the map. Wayang, uh, uh, gambelan, gambelan players, you've got Sumba textile, and on the top right, you see Borobudur. Can you see that? And those islands, chain of islands. So, another perspective. So, let's focus on Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia. Let's say if you want to fly to Bali from Jakarta, it takes one hour and 30 minutes. If you want to fly to Medan, Medan is in Sumatra. So you go to Sumatra Island, you see a lake there. Yeah, next to there so a picture of a building. You will see Medan. Take a closer look. From Jakarta to Medan, it takes um, two hours. Now I'd like to take to go to your right. Next to Sulawesi, you see Seram, Seram, you see Ambon. From Jakarta to Ambon. It takes uh, three hours and a half direct flight, which I've, I've, I've done a few years back. But, but to Singapore, Jakarta, Singapore, is only one hour and 20 minutes. So you see the country at, of that, that size, um, we have about 500 ethnic groups with more than 500 distinct languages. 
So I'm talk we're talking about not dialects, but distinct languages. That's why people in Bali, they have their own language. For example, and in Java, the main language is of course uh, Javanese. And some people ask me, so is, are they totally different? Yes, they're different. If my Tony, if Tony, uh, let's say fails to use the national language Indonesian, I can't, I will not understand what he's talking about. Uh, that's to show how complex it is, okay? Let's take a deep, uh, uh, a deep breath. Try to digest that. <laughs> and then, so the question is that, where did it start? So it started, like Tony mentioned, it, it's in 1998. So where it started, it started here. Jakarta, where I, where I was born and raised. One of those, uh, and this is in, uh, in Sudir, Jalan Sudirman, Sudirman Street. Uh, people associate Jakarta with uh, traffic jam and all that, but that's fine. But if you can scratch the surface and you, if you know where to go and have a, a guide to take you around, you'll be impressed, surprised by how diverse, how rich, the, how sophisticated the city is. This is, for example, the National Museum. It also has a very, very nice, my favorite part is the, the, the city hall. The old Batavia, this is the 17th century statue, the, 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 the city hall is still standing. And also it's, it's a fun place to, to have fun basically. There, nice to have a drink. Um, looking at the city with friends and yeah, you listen smoke a lot. So they can, you can, I think you can smoke there also. I don't encourage it, but just to let you know. So going back to me again, that who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Tony is from Bali and I'm from, okay. I show you a map. Go, we go back to Sumatra map, yeah? Here you are. Can you see the lake there? On the right hand side, Samosir Danau Toba, Lake Toba. So, where uh, my maternal grandparents, the ancestral land of my maternal grandparents. So, my mother is Batak, it's a Batak tribe. Try to remember that word, Batak tribe. That's, there she is, there she was. Uh, okay. Where's my father from? I'll take you to another island, Sumbawa. It's easy to remember Prague because you, will, you see Bali there. Bali on your left, and then Lombok, and then Sumbawa. I have to warn you because, again, we're talking about diversity. Sumbawa is split into two parts. There are two different cultures, West Sumbawa and East Sumbawa, different languages too. So my, mother, my father was from Bima. Can you see Bima? Yeah, you see, he was from there. And having born in Jakarta, raised in Jakarta, so I end up speaking in the national language because my parents speak uh, two different languages. Let's go to textile as the first taste of that. So I'll show you this picture. Me on right, see was a, this, this, this is a, an, a, a, an event at the Indonesian Embassy in Singapore, Indonesian Embassy in Singapore. So I was wearing two types of Batak textile called ulos is actually a rectangular, a rectangular uh, textile with different function, different names, so mind-boggling, maybe about 1,000 types perhaps. And I was wearing two on my shoulder cloth is called ulos harungguan. Hold on, yeah, I'll give you the... This is ulos harungguan. Let me read a little bit of that. So it is worn only by high caste men as a shoulder cloth or hip cloth. It is said that each stripe contains motifs and colors of all the other Batak textiles, which is what makes it so valuable. I like this textile a lot. You can see the different patterns in there. I think if you count it, how many there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least nine, nine, nine different patterns. So what about, let me go back to the, this picture again. The hip cloth that I was wearing, can you see that? Yeah, okay. 
And here you are. This is this is the textile, yeah. It's called Ulos Pinun Saan. So one of the most important textiles in Batak culture. So it's a shoulder cloth for men and women of higher social standing, a hip cloth for men, burial shroud for widows of higher social status. It is also used to cover coffin and corpse of a person of higher social standing. It is a gift from the bride's parents to the parents of the groom and a gift from the bride's pattern, uh, parents to the groom if he was the firstborn child. You are. Okay, take a breath first. Okay, now we're talking about Bima. Do you remember Bima? Okay, I'll show you this picture. So I mean in, in, in Bima, in the, the palace of Bima, which is now a museum, uh, flanked by uh, court dancers. As you can see that, uh, the tear the high in the band, because so they're not allowed to cover their heads when they're dancing. So they have to remove the head scarf in order to perform in the palace. And before performance, they have to perform rituals. So Islam only came to Sumbawa in the 17th century. So it's very recent. They still hold on into the old beliefs. And look at the my waist cloth. It's called salampe. Yeah, I'll give you a sample of that picture of this salampe. Here you are. So it's different from Batak textile, right? You can see the difference. Yeah. Uh, I'll show you another samples. Although I believe this is it when I bought it in, 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 in Jakarta, it is said this is from Bima, but it could be from Lombok, but it, it's quite similar. Okay, here you are. And what does it look like, Sumbawa? Okay, I'll show you a picture then. Picture of myself. Here you are. So can you imagine that if you build uh, an Aman resort with a few, a few to die for? I don't mind. So this is my recent trip back in uh, 2019. Uh, my own program my own, uh, of, of tracing my roots because I grew up in Jakarta. I was more, I'm more closer to Bata culture there's a lot to learn from my father's side. Okay. Uh, Tony? Yes. Any question? Uh, <laughs> so no, we... Or comment? Uh, because I, I, uh, I'd like you to, 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 correct, uh, to check on the chat. Yes, sure. Uh, uh, not at the moment. You okay, no, the question, I'll, I'll continue there. Okay, let, let me show you some samples of of, of Batak, Batak uh, textile, yeah? I will not, uh, will not, okay, there's, I mentioned earlier, it could be about 1,000 types of Batak with different name, uh, textile with different names, but I will not try because I have to cross-check many times and sometimes uh, we need to really talk to, to, to scholars like Sandra Nissen in, 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 in Holland to cross-check. But uh, yeah, I just give you uh, an idea of, of I'll show you some samples in from my collection. This one is called uh, Bintang Maratur, for example. It is used as shoulder cloth. Just this, this one, just one, one of those many types of ulos. Another shoulder cloth called Sitolutuho, worn by girls and also young young boys. Another sample. Yeah. One more sample, one of my favorite because of it's it's very complex. I have to cross check the name because I was given different names, so I don't want to I do not want to mislead you. I'll show you a book later on how to identify Batak textiles. Yeah. And this is the last sample. Uh, 
I'm going to read to you what uh, Lonely Planet, I like Lonely Planet. I think the description is quite, quite nice. So, whoa, Batak people, who, who are they? Who are Batak people? Let me read, read for you. The Bataks were among the most warlike peoples in Sumatra and villages were constantly feuding. They were so mistrustful that they did not build or maintain natural paths between villages or construct bridges. The practice of ritual cannibalism, I repeat, the practice of ritual cannibalism, which involved eating the flesh of a slain enemy or a person found guilty of a serious breach of adat or traditional law, survived among the Toba Bataks until 1816. Today, there are more than 6 million Bataks divided into six, million, uh, six main linguistic, linguistic groups and the lands extend 200 kilometers north and 30 kilometers south of uh, Danau Toba or Lake Toba. That's a description that I like about Batak. So what does it look like Lake Toba? This is a picture I took a few years back. See how beautiful it is. So the Batak people are known to be very, very direct, uh, very outspoken. They're good lawyers, they're also good singers, I was told. I'm only half Batak, so maybe, but so Bima people are also quite outspoken, so some people think I'm too Western, I don't know what it means, but anyway, yeah. Is it Western? Okay. <laughs> too Western of Indonesia or too Western? <laughs> no idea. Okay, let me go okay. back. Yes. A uh, quick question, so uh, Hannah uh, has a question. Uh, thanks for sharing your beautiful and extensive collection. And a racy question. If a non-Batak or even a non-Indonesian were to wear an ulos in a public event, would that be, would that be considered a cultural appropriation? This is, this, okay, this is a tough question that has been popping up many, many times. And I think I've been trying to understand it and understand the question, cultural appropriation. Uh, we have been having discussion in, in my, the textile group that I've, I found it. I think we don't have a conclusion of that. Um, put it this way. Okay, I'll give you an example. See what I'm wearing now? It's a Balinese textile. It's actually a breast cloth, Tirtanadi. It's almost extinct. It is, it's been revived. Uh, but I'm wearing it at, as, a, as a scarf. So I don't think so. I think as long as I guess you show some respect, we, you, I don't know what, so the term is, it is quite, it's hard to define it basically, uh, how to show a respect to piece of textile. But as long as, as, as you maybe wear it with good intention and why not? So for example, there's a, a Batak textile like this, yeah? Uh, yeah, let me jump to this one. Okay, let me show you a picture of this, yeah? There's a similar textile, uh, which is a head cloth in Batak culture, and he used that as, as, a, as a, a scarf when I was traveling last time. So I felt okay with that, actually. I felt okay with that. But if you want to be rigid, and it happened to me, uh, basically, uh, uh, I hope I'm not too long-winded, but you can come up with your own conclusion. Let me show you this, yeah? Let me show you this, yeah? Okay, this is Pinunsa uh, and uh, very important textile. So when my father passed away, I was not allowed to give it, to use it to cover the body because it must be given by my uncles. Even I, though I brought that textile to the funeral, I could not do anything about it. I, my intention is that I wanted to use it to cover that, but I was not allowed because uh, your adat, your, your law dictates that. It's quite, it's like a slap in the face, but I couldn't do anything, but I just have to accept that. So back to your question, um, I think as long as the good intention is there and why not? I hope that that, that answers your question. Yeah, well, on a similar uh, note on the uh, funeral ceremony. So uh, Nuraki actually asked like, so what sort of Batak wedding ceremony that your parents had, given that they are from two different cultures? For instance, is there a class ceremony involved? I'll come back to that. Okay. I'll come back to that because it's in, 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 it's part of the discussion. But before that, let me uh, uh, continue first with Aceh here. Yeah? Uh, and yeah. then I'll come back to uh, 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 yeah. this question. Okay. 
Okay, I don't want, um, let me show you the, the map again so that you won't be lost. Okay, remember this map? Okay, select so over there. You go, go to your right, left, you will see that's part now part of Aceh province. Yeah? Aceh province bordering West Sumatra, uh, West, uh, North Sumatra province. You will, you will see that uh, Langsa, Lok Samawe on top of that. So Aceh. I need to show you this because I'll, I'll get, it, it, it's connected to Batak. So Aceh is also quite diverse, yeah? It's quite diverse, quite diverse. So this is the uh, shoulder cloth. It's uh, wrapped by, uh, worn by women in Gayo Highland in Aceh. It's machine embroidery from, 1920, uh, from the 1920s. Another sample is this one. This is a men's jacket. Also embroidered. Yeah. Acha used to grow his own cotton. And this is one example of a very nice uh, shoulder cloth from Acha. With supplement to have a, 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 a gold thread at the bottom. And this is a piece of textile that also inspired the Batak people. It's called I, I, Plang Ijarusa. So you see that the, the, the arrow patterns is it's, it's made of silk, I think from the 19th century easily. And that inspired this particular textile called uh, Ros Mangiring, which is used as a baby carrier. I know there's some 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 question on pattern. Um, let me go back to that. If I can answer those questions, I'll do that because again, this is an overview of the of of the whole thing. Because if you want to talk about patterns, we have to be specific. For example, we can talk about Sumatra in general. We can talk about Kalimantan in general, and so on. Yeah. So this is this is uh, Ros Mangiring, which is a baby carrier. The pattern inspired by Aceh textile, an old picture showing uh, a Batak lady carrying a baby, very cute baby with Ulos Mangiring. And the lady on the right seems to be tying the pattern for, for of, of, uh, of arrow pattern. I, I, uh, 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 his nickname is I, I. I'll come back to your question. Okay, so the question is about so what kind of textile? This is the thing about, about, about the Batak people. So the textile I showed to you earlier, it can be used in, in, in any kind of party, uh, a ceremony. It can be wedding, it could be, it could be funeral. But for, for the wedding, for the, uh, the, the groom and the red groom, this is interesting, yeah? Okay, I'll show you this textile. This is a uh, shoulder cloth woven on the island of Bangka. Where is Bangka? I'll show you later. So spectacular design, intricate design, and the border you've got uh, gold thread. So it's not metallic thread, it's gold wrap thread. It's very, very heavy. And this is why, so uh, sometimes because of the, 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 the textile cannot uh, uh, carry the weight, so it, it could, deteriorate very easily. Um, this is the, I give you the, the close up. You can see the pattern and see the gold. It's been restored because it's torn to, to the weight because of the weight of uh, the gold thread. Yeah? Uh, it's quite expensive to, to, to to, to, to have it restored in Hong Kong, but it is worth it. Why, why it is worth it? I'll tell you why. Because my mother wore it on, the, on her wedding. So you can see it's been, the, the color is a bit off, but she wore the, those particular textile. It's, uh, it's my collection now. now it, that, it didn't belong to her. So my aunt loaned it to her and she wore it. Why? 
because uh, this is so interesting story because my grandparents were not happy about her marrying someone from Bima. So she took care of herself, doing her own makeup and so on, and borrowed textile from here and there. And that's, that's her. That's the family history. Where is Banka? Okay. Can you see that? Banka Island. This is the southern part of Sumatra. And I'd like to, to uh, look at Palembang. Palembang is a different province called uh, West Sumatra, uh, South Sumatra, sorry. And below Palembang, you see some uh, cities, Kota Bumi, Manggala, Sukadana, and so on. They are part of Lampung. So try to remember to the two names, yeah? South Sumatra province and Lampung province, because I'll get back to you on that. Um, I'm intrigued by this question. Someone asked about motif. Uh, can, can, uh, uh, can you show it to me, uh, Tony? Yes, there are some people asking about uh, motif. Uh, James was asking if there is any uh, distinguished user, uh, uses of Batak Pulos itself and if there are, uh, and Audrey is asking if there are any significant patterns in Batak textile. Okay, um, uh, I'm good to confess with, have a confession because um, as far as I remember, um, they look at uh, just the, uh, Certain patterns belong to certain certain uh, 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 textiles, basically. So hold on, yeah. Uh, let me show you this. It's quite tricky to answer that. This Uno Spinonsaan. Um, the top at the bottom, if I remember correctly, the top is male and the bottom is female. So two different patterns, but the meaning is actually quite quite problematic to, to decipher. And this is also part of the, the discussion among members. So it's, so I'm a collector and also I also deal with, with this. this is the part of understanding Indonesian textile, which is quite tricky. So from Western perspective, they also always want to know, understand about motives. Everything is about motive, significance of this, and all that. But for some people, I'll show you, I'll get back to you later on that. They, they don't care about, okay, just a piece of, just a pattern, basically, just, just a pattern. We don't have to go through that, through that, uh, look into certain motives, for example, uh, very closely, because sometimes it doesn't make any sense to them. Uh, if, you, if I may go back to this, So the center part is, this has been described as Garuda motif. If you remember Garuda, uh, the mythical bird of uh, the, the, the national emblem of Indonesia. So it doesn't look like a bird at all. So this is part of the challenge of trying to understand, trying to decipher those motifs. And to, to tell you the truth, I have given up on that. And when it comes to, uh, hold on here, yeah. Batak textile, let me show you this. This book, oh, sorry, 500 pages, written by Sandra Nissen, a good friend of mine. So it has everything about that. So about Batak textiles, about the function, mostly about the function, mostly about the function of the textile, not necessarily the, the meaning of, 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 of the of a particular, a particular design. For example, this, I will not attempt to, to read, to understand the meaning of that. I need to go back to Sandra to understand that because I don't want to mislead people by coming up with uh, strange ideas. If you deal with dealers, I'm a, as a collector, sometimes you ask dealers, what do you think about this? They will come up with certain, uh, some crazy ideas about, uh, about certain motives. So I'm, I'm quite careful about that. I don't want to jump into conclusion or creating my own uh, attempt to, to understand the motive. I hope that answered the question. Sorry if this uh, not um, up to what, what you're up, up to, but uh, that's that's what I can offer to you. Any others before I continue to Sumatra? Other part? 
Oh well, there is a general question uh, from uh, Aki again. Uh, yes. Some of my friends in London said that the diversity of Indonesia is actually confusing to non-Indonesians. And then I will add, I think uh, it is confusing to Indonesians too, to some Indonesians too. So what do you think? Uh, what sort of cultural educations that's needed? Okay. Um, it is confusing. At the start, I also mentioned it is confusing and Tony mentioned too many, there are too many. I want to show you this, for example, yeah? this particular textile. I me jump into this a little bit, yeah? Because the meaning is has become so contentious. Uh, can you see this? Yes. So this is Iban textile, for example. I'll come back to that later. So you try to understand this. Oh, the, the top part is like, uh, hmm, the central part looks like, hmm, I don't know what it is actually. <laughs> so there's so many interpretation on, on Iban textile, for example. It looks like, a, oh, this, it, this, this resembles, for example, um, a deer, but it doesn't look like a deer at all. So what is that? Um, let me show you this actual textile here. Yeah? This is, for example, this, this particular pattern. Oh, it is actually looks like a shield. Oh, it is shield, really? Okay, fine. So if, if you ask a, a weaver something, Ibu, do you think it's a shield? I've got no idea what it is. So that's the, the, the challenging part of trying to understand uh, the, the pattern. Back to uh, 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 EE, can I answer your question towards the end? Because I'm gonna talk about where we are now. So Tony, please remind me because that's a question that must be answered, yeah? Yes. Let me go through Sumatra just very quickly. Uh, go to Lampung. So I, when I started collecting, I was, in, I was so amazed by Sumatra. Isle of Gold, Isle of Gold, and because of the uh, paper trade back then in the 16th century, Lampung in particular was so rich. So they could afford to create, to weave, to produce beautiful textile, gold thread textiles, with gold threads. This is a wedding, for example, uh, it's a wedding uh, wedding skirt, it's full gold. It's not, it's not metallic, metallic thread, it's full gold. Another sample is this. You might see tiny, tiny pieces of, 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 of mirrors there. Can you imagine when, you, when, you, when the, the wearer walks, it just glow basically, <laughs> it glows because of those uh, the design. And they could, because of, yeah, they were so rich, they could import the finest uh, silk. Thank you. I'll show you, I better show you the, the, the close up here. Yeah? Chinese silk, and you can see the tiny, tiny mirrors there. So it's when you, if you wear that, it, it glows basically. And one of my favorite parts, so going back to the question about meaning and so on. So this is also one, one example. This is a jacket worn by, by girls in, in Lampung, in Kawe area. Um, and dealer will tell you, this is actually a, 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 a jacket for, for, for children, for little girls. No, it's not, because back then, I guess people are, are smaller in size. And they call it baju monyet or monkey, monkey, monkey's, monkey uh, shirt, because, Back then, as a kid, back in, in, in the 80s, uh, uh, kids used to wear this kind of, uh, 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 an outfit called baju monyet. So it's not the case, basically, it's not the case. That's the, uh, the, the jacket, and this is the skirt. There. And this is how it was worn back then. Uh, this is an old print from in my collection. You can see that? Yeah. I'll show you the real textile to give you a better idea. Here you are. Can you see the, the tiny, tiny, hold on, let me stand up. The tiny, tiny uh, 
Mirror is there. Mirror. Switch into that. Can you? And this, yeah. the shell shows some significance because this this people in this area live in a mountain. So to be able to to uh, attach these shells is actually a a, a a sign of of wealth. This is the front. This is the back. Yeah. So uh, that's Lampung. Moving back to Palembang. See, I mentioned Palembang earlier. So let's have a quick look on, on, on the wealth of, of, of how simmering a beautiful textile from Palembang. Uh, ah, this friend of mine, when she went to Singapore a few years ago, I asked her to wear this. Show the cloth and then the baju. Yeah, the simmering. Okay. This is another, sh uh, another shoulder cloth. Those who like painting, may, may this might remind you of Rothko painting. Another sample. Uh, this is the, and I'll show you the, the top, yes. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. Let me take you another to another island, but I'll show you the map again, yeah? Map of, let me go back to the map. Or any question about Sumatra so far? Okay, I'm gonna take you to Kalimantan. Take to Kalimantan briefly, and after Kalimantan, I'll take you to Sulawesi, yeah? Okay, hold on. Any question on Sumatra? Sumatra is not finished yet. We just barely uh, uh, scratch the surface because I haven't talked about West Sumatra. West Sumatra province, Padang Food, Minangkabau people. This is the book on textile from West Sumatra, about 350 pages, if you want to be specific. A very good book, show different uh, type of textile from West Sumatra. It's so diverse, different different places, Batu Sangkar, um, uh, Payakumbu, they have different types of textile and so on and so on. So if you try to cover everything, I think it will last forever, this talk. <laughs> we'll be running out of breath. And we can come back again next time with, let's say, Sumatra. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to Kalimantan. Let's go to Kalimantan. I'll show you this, yeah? Remember when we mentioned Batak, uh, the six, uh, the Batak is divided into six ethnic groups. And if you, let me show you again the, the map of Kalim uh, Indonesia to give you perspective. Okay, look at Kalimantan, see on the left side, just beyond, uh, below the international border with Sarawak, which is now part of Malaysia, they live Iban people. They're former headhunters. So basically it's part of the, the, the constellation, part of tradition to maintain peace. They have to basically head, uh, uh, take heads from enemies, which is one, then displayed, uh, the dried uh, uh, heads will be displayed in, in the log houses. Uh, the practice was banned in the 19th century by the Dutch what, that controlled uh, now uh, the, the archipelago and also by the British which controlled Sarawak and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and Sabah. I'm very I'm interested in, in those textiles because this is part of the, the challenge of trying to identify the motif. So I'll show you this, yeah? It is also same as a batak rectangular. It's called pua. So this type of textile is displayed during ceremonies in the longhouses, Iban longhouses. Uh, it is used as a wrap during rituals. It is used as a divider uh, during a wake to divide, uh, to, to separate the area where the body is laid in the longhouse and to uh, ritually, ritually uh, receive the head, but the head before being, before the heads 
were taken into the longhouse has to be dried first. So there's no blood, there's nothing because dealers will tell you, oh, it's, it is so dramatic, blood will drop into the cloth and so on. It's not the case. It is also used as a, as, as, uh, as a mat during ceremonies to put food on top of it. That's why sometimes you see uh, 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 stains everywhere, but this one is in a good condition. So you see that the buaya motif there, the crocodile motif, which, which represent the underworld. But that's about it, yeah, that's about it. According to studies, they represent the underworld. That's Iban. I'm gonna show you a textile from Kantu tribe, which is a subgroup of Iban. So different, may look similar, but don't worry about it. If you think that they're similar, it will take time. It will take time to understand. It will take more than 10 years to understand differences. So don't worry about that. This is used as a shoulder cloth, cloth and to cover the head of, of a priest during ceremony. The, what is the meaning of, what, what are the meaning of, of, the, of, 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 of this status? I've got no idea. I haven't come across a book explaining the meaning of that. And I don't want to waste my time on that because again, sometimes we are, so uh, the idea of, Western idea of understanding textile can be different. I think, I think we're trying to, to, to change that, the, the narrative right now because everything is not all about the meaning. This is the textile I showed you earlier. This is from a different tribe called Ketunggal. Yeah, so we talk about Iban and then Kantu. Ketunggal. This is a ketunggal skirt. How do I know that this ketunggal? Because, because they may look similar to you, to me initially, but because of this. This site, this motif appeared in many ketunggal textiles and, be uh, and, and it becomes a trademark of ketunggal textile. And you see the stitches also, it was nicely done. Going back to Kantuk, this is a skirt, uh, sorry, a jacket, similar jacket that I bought from eBay actually. I was very lucky because they're very rare. It's in very good condition. Um, one of my favorite, <laughs> favorite uh, textiles. This one, this picture is so dear to me. Why? I started collecting in uh, 1998. This is a trip I took to uh, West Kalimantan province, the home of the Iban Ketnuk Kanto Ketunggak Ketunggal Mualang people. When I took this picture, I didn't understand. I knew nothing about textile. I had no idea about textile. I didn't care about textile. I didn't care about Indonesia. I will answer a uh, question later. So 10 years later, then I thought this is crazy because those textiles worn by those dancers are well uh, sought after by collectors. They're very, very rare and very, can be very, very expensive. Beadwork is also part of the textile uh, uh, repertoire. I'll show you some samples here. Yeah? from the same area, from the same province of West Kalimantan. See? So it's a combination of, 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 of ikat, I'll come back to you later, and also a bit work. Another sample. This is the jacket from woven by Maloh people in West Kalimantan. And this is this, this is the skirt. Uh, sorry, this is uh, the, the, the back of the jacket. And I'll show you the skirt, yeah? hold on, yeah. And this is the skirt. It's quite heavy actually if you wear that. Yeah, it's old bit. Can you see that?
one more sample. This is also one of my favorite uh, textile in the collection, another jacket. Okay. Now, um, I'm gonna take it to Sulawesi very quickly. Where is Sulawesi? Tony, shall I show you the map again? Or you think people know where Sulawesi is? I, don't know. I think you can. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let me show Sulawesi again. Okay, next to Kalimantan. People say it looks like orchid. I don't think that looks like orchid. It looks like letter K. <laughs> so that's Sulawesi. <laughs> Yeah, Sulawesi. So I'm only showing some pictures from the central part of Sulawesi. North, different, uh, uh, got different type of textile. Just very quickly on that. So that you won't fall asleep. <laughs> There's a lot to cover. Okay. One of my favorite, I've got a lot of favorites. Uh, okay, this one, uh, a blouse. Made of bark cloth. Another sample made of cotton and uh, it's adorned with, with the mica pieces, so it's very cute actually. Can you see that? Yeah. And little cloth uh, hung during uh, ceremonies like this one, for example. We tend to group those texts into Toraja. The Toraja is actually quite, Toraja land is actually, it is also very, very diverse. You've got Mamuju, you've got Mamasa, and so on, yeah? Um, you also have uh, beadwork in Toraja. This is like a, more like a shoulder, one over the shoulder, if I remember correctly. This is it. This, the next one is interesting. It's called Kandaure. So it's, it's displayed during ceremonies, but also worn by dancers. So the, the top part will be at the back of the dancer and the plate over uh, the, 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 the strand, the long strand. We create, uh, it's a, like a shoulder decoration. This is very heavy, maybe about two kilograms. Uh, hold on, yeah. You might know tai dye. Tai dye is, is is also a practice in Sulawesi. It's a banner. Okay, I'm gonna move to Bali. But before that, any question? Um, nope, there is none. Okay, Bali. What, where are you from? And uh, in where were you? you were, Tony, you were born in Bali, right? Uh, yes, I am. I Where was born it? Born and raised in Denpasar. Oh, Denpasar. Okay, okay. The so-called everyone was Bali, <laughs> and then yeah. Bali, is, <laughs> Bali is textile also very, very uh, nice. Oh yeah, uh, Audrey asked a question. What kind of textile did normal people wear? Uh, where are you specifically referring to? So textile I've shown you now is like uh, old. Uh, uh, um, uh, ceremonial textiles, not daily life textiles. So all ceremonial textiles. Yeah, that's the Yeah, yeah. yeah. So all ceremonial uh -huh. textiles. So for example, uh, I'll show you again this one here. Yeah? It's not for everyday use, only for ceremonies. And there are a lot of ceremonies in 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 Toraja area, for example. Yeah. Um, how oh. about the Bugis, someone asked. Uh, Bugis, Bugis, they have their own textile. I don't have it, I don't collect it. Okay, I'll come back to that. Basically, when you come to collecting textile, you collect what you like. Only collect what you like. I, uh, I don't say I don't like Bugis textile, but I just don't like, I don't, I don't collect them. So I don't have, I'm sorry, I don't have the example, but if you go to uh, Makassar, for example, you see Bugis textiles there. I don't have the sample, I'm sorry about that. Uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, ikat textile also from their side. Uh, since I don't have the samples, I'm sorry I can't show you, but uh, I don't say they're not beautiful. They're beautiful, but I just don't collect them. Any others? And uh, there's one more on Kalimantan textiles. Uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, Mr. Lee was asked. 
<laughs> I was asking, I was googling Kalimantan textile and found ulap doyo. It's ulap. different because it's not not colorful yeah. and it's made from fiber leaf. Please explain further. Yeah, if you have any insights to that. I have one sample. Um, yeah, ulap doyo is 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 is, is fiber. So uh, what I can tell you is that it is it is woven in 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 East Kalimantan now it's Kalimantan province ulap doyo textiles. It's also ritual textile, not one in, in not they're not they're not one every day as a skirt. Uh, the ikat pattern also uh, it's being revived. Uh, they're doing a good job in 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 doing that. I have an example, but maybe I'll show you to later. So uh, since I don't specifically look at that again, I'm sorry to say I don't. I have one or two pieces, but I don't pay much attention to that. Just use as a token because. I only focus on the textile that I have to say I like, right? Okay. So ulap doyo, uh, they're using fiber. Uh, uh, it's different from cotton, grown in by uh, those people, Benuak people in East Kalimantan. It's still being woven. It's still being used uh, right now. It's a quite complex process because you need to 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 harvest the fiber and you've got to process it in in in, in running water to make sure that. That you got the finest threads, and after that you 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 weave it, you create patterns, you dye it, and then you wear it basically. Okay, quickly on Bali, yeah, quickly on Bali. I'll show you this. This may also answer the question on how should we what is cultural appropriation. This is a breast cloth, but it's beautiful, uh, beautiful breast cloth. I, I can. I, I use it as 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 a as a shoulder, uh, as a scarf too, and only noble people can uh, can can afford to commission this kind of textile. It's made of silk, and very intricate pattern. This one also one of my favorite Balinese textile. It's a tie dye. It's a long breast cloth, but you can, you can use it for again as a scarf, as a scarf. Yeah? This one, nobleman's uh, uh, waist cloth. Why? Because of the pattern. It, it denotes the, 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 the rank of the guy. I, 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 I got it from uh, in Bali. Uh, this is a story repeated, sometimes repeated. Some people need money to pay for school education. and all. Sometimes you get lucky to get, um, they, want, they, they would sell uh, certain pieces to, to cover expenses. So my story, this one, yeah, you, it's not very common, isn't it? Only ro royal noblemen own that particular piece. Yep, I have not served specifically like yeah, saw yeah. this pattern before. That's right. And again, okay, this one, yeah. Back to that question and how how to use those texts are, to me, do whatever you like. This is a, also another brass cloth actually, but I use it as a, as a as a uh, as a scarf, it's it's, it's in front of the embassy in Paris. I'm gonna go back to that that the, the picture later to explain why it is. I need to show it to you. So yeah. Okay. Where are we now? Are we okay? Shall I continue? Yes, you can. Uh, just a quick note from Lenel and other fans. Uh, oh, thanks for sharing, Lewa. <laughs> and I'm oh. in love with textile of Sarawak and Kalimantan. Okay. And a lot of different emojis with uh, smiles and love. Yeah. <laughs> so, Lenel, basically like this. I mean, I'm not being nationalistic. I only want to focus on uh, Kalimantan textiles, even from the Indonesian side of Kalimantan or Borneo Island, because they are understudied. And because unlike those in, in West, uh, in, in, in Sarawak, the Iban people are more diverse. Iban, they have subgroups with different types of textiles. And because they're so, so, so understudied, and this is part of, I'm a journalist, so uh, I need to find more about, about that. So I'm, I'm more like uh, obsessed by that. So we can do another talk separately on Iban textiles from Kalimantan, for example, if there's an uh, exponent time. There's another question from Audrey, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh, she asked, uh, did silk fabric appear only in port cities since they are imported? 
uh, silk. Silk. Um, uh, are they only in port cities? So usually, if I remember correctly, in port cities, I mentioned earlier, uh, earlier uh, Aceh, they used to produce their own silk, but no, no more. And uh, this silk, I'll show you, for example, this one here. Yeah? This silk, this shoulder cloth from uh, Palembang, the Chinese silk, basically, the Chinese silk. Um, I think Java used to produce its own silk. Bali, perhaps at some point, but usually that the argument among the, 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 the among, among scholars and, and, and dealers and the collectors that mostly uh, silk packs are found in Indonesia, uh, uh, imported a silk from China. Although you mentioned bookies, they, they, they still grow their own silk to produce very beautiful uh, sarong. I think there was some mis uh, question from James, is that? Uh, yes, so uh, to continue on textile from Bali. Do you have uh, examples of one of their most popular textile, the double ikat, the gringsing? I have, but I'm sorry I don't have the picture, but I can run later. <laughs> later. Uh, it's okay, I can just replace the spotlight to myself here. Yeah, that's there. That's the double yeah. That's the double ikat, the one on my left. Yeah. And Aki asks, uh, what do you think of Dior using tenun anda? How to use it to okay. Balinese or Indonesian's okay. interests? And that one comeback comes later when we do the what what are we now? So two questions from Nuraki Aziz, yeah. Okay. Uh, how sure. actually, to to to, to uh, tell Indonesians on uh, how to educate Indonesians and then the double the and then your story. Uh, Dior, yeah. Yes. I'll try not to be as too bitchy on that, but anyway, I'll come back to <laughs> you on that. So. <laughs> yeah, Ajia, you have got uh, uh, you got three questions. Now, briefly, we go to Timor, yeah? Timor, Timor, Timor. Okay, before that, um, okay, again, to do it. There's too many. And for me, as in Indonesian, it's also quite difficult trying to understand the country. It's, it's very, it's too mind boggling. And I, living outside Indonesia, it, it allows me actually to learn more about my own country. Timor Textile is also quite diverse. Uh, this is a book on Timor Textile. Let me show you, let me go back to the map, give you a bit of perspective again, yeah? because this is interesting. Something to do with history is politics too. Okay, find Timor, island of Timor. Tony, did you find it? Did you find it? So this map is from 1954. See the island of Timor, of the forest, yeah, Jaffa, go to East, Bali, Lombok, Sumba, Sumba, Timor. It is divided into two parts. So the, the white part, it belong, it's Portuguese Timor back then. And then that island was invaded by Indonesia in 1975 and annexed in 1976 and become a province of, of, of East Timor. In 2002, after upheaval and a referendum, um, it became, he voted for independence. So me and I in London, so you, I was there also to, to cover the, the people. So you can see the context in there. So Timor, it, 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 at this, this time, we're gonna talk about West Timor, which is part of Indonesia, but uh, I'll give you example of, 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 of some textiles yeah, from West Timor. It is part of the East Nusa Tenggara, East Nusa Tenggara province, but I don't like the word East Nusa Tenggara because it is, it does not reflect the diversity of of, of the country because East Nusa Tenggara province consists of Timor Island, western part, you've got uh, Sumba, you've got Flores, you've got uh, Rote Islands and so on, Lembata, so it's part of that. You've got to be very specific. If you talk about Sumatra and Texta, what part of Sumatra? Because it's so diverse. Are we talking about Lampung? Are we talking about Bangka Island? Are we talking about Palembang? Are we talking about West Sumatra province and so on? Yeah? Quick uh, run on Timor textile. So I'm not going into meaning uh, crocodiles and everything. It's gonna show the cloth that I like. Uh, 
um, this is a belt, a beautiful belt. Another beautiful textile. Okay, textile. I'm gonna mention the word buna. Buna is a technique, buna, unique to Timor. But there's similar technique as well in other parts of the country, but in Timor it's called buna, but too much, buna is also quite complex. There are more than one, uh, maybe five types of buna. I'm not going to details because I've got a headache trying to understand uh, the technique itself. It's called buna. Okay, this is a skirt that I like. Yeah. Okay, and this is the, the details. I'm gonna read what buna is. Okay, take a look at that. I'll read this one. So buna, textile. So it, it both wrapping knots of threads around the wraps between passes of the weft to create patterns. So the technique is called buna. It's so complex that a piece of sarong can take a year to make. So it's something like this, for example. So this is the, the base, in that case, the black thread. And you wrap the cut thread around this, around that to create patterns. <laughs> yeah, so difficult <laughs> thing to understand. Um, you wrap around that, to, you've got to count, you've got to, you've got to make sure that it's, they're, they're aligned. So, what is unique about Buna textile? As you come, so it's like this basically. I'll give you one sample, yeah. Okay. This is one beautiful textile from uh, West Timor. This is Buna. So you see the base is this color, and the weaver will wrap those colorful textile around this. In the process, because it's so complex, so so nicely done. So the front and the back are the same. Can you see? Yeah, the front and the back. Compared to another technique called supplementary weft of uh, uh, of inserting uh, the thread around around. Uh, the thread, uh, uh, gold thread around the other threads to create pattern. So it's, it's uh, the difference is like this. I can give an example of the, the, of the Lampung textile, for example. This is the front. This is used in ceremonies in Lampung. Yeah? This is the front. This is the back. So you can see the difference, right? The process of inserting those thread alternating around the wrap. So it's, it's quite complex. So, well, Buna is different. I like this text a lot. This is newly made and love it so much. This is the front. And this is the back. Same, right? See, if I try to explain to you, I, do, I, think, I don't think I can. How on earth they managed to do it, I have no idea. So we have to, we have to really respect uh, uh, those weavers. They are artisans. The brains are different from ours. So that's 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 Timor. Okay. We also have this. Yeah. So this is this is not for girls, for men. So I'm, my plan is to, to walk down Orchard Road one day to use this and see if people. Fit. Uh, pay attention to me. So it's a it's a man's it's a man's back actually. It's a man's back. I love it so much. A uh, quick question: uh, yes. Is is buna technique a kind of tie dye? No, no. Uh, yeah. Tie dye is basically yeah. uh, tie dye is similar to ikat. I'll come back to ikat later. So tie dye, you you you. Uh, I don't have the, I don't have the the, the example of yeah. that. Yeah, this probably. Is, yeah, this is Holden, You yeah? had photos. Photos, <laughs> hold on, yeah. Yep, and uh, yeah, Miss Daddy is 
Yeah, this is tie dye. Right. So yeah, the tie dye basically the, mm -hmm. the you know the the, the, the dot 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 there. You, you you grab the threads. You 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 tie it up. So you dye it over and over to create those pattern. Let's tie dye okay. from from from. Uh, uh, yeah, and Mr. Lee is asking, is it a weaving technique? Yes, it is. It is weaving technique. Yeah, probably we'll go into more so we have, depth okay, in the we, future. In the future. So we, okay, I, uh, so Ika, uh, we have Buna, right? Buna is a technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we come to Ikat a bit later, which is also a technique. Uh, I have to quickly mention Batik. Batik is a technique. So that's why if you talk about Batik, you can't say this only, it's Indonesian. No. Because batik is also practiced in, in, in India, for example. And ikat is also practiced in, in Japan, in India, even in the Middle East, in, uh, in, in Yemen. So I'll come back to you on that. So Timor is there. Sumba, you go to Sumba now. I don't know Sumba. It is uh, it's called... This is not sure the cloth. It's actually, it's, it's, it's actually loin cloth. It's, it's called hingi. Uh, the, um, Europeans love it so much because of it's so graphic. You've got uh, crocodiles in there. You've got uh, udang, little prawns. Yeah? The prawns. Yeah. Yeah, so it's actually loin cloth. So you, 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 you fold many times. You wrap around your waist as a, almost like an underwear, basically. It, it's like that. It's just like that. But it's beautiful to hang. So go back to that question again. I, I, I won't wear it to... <laughs> Uh, because I tried before, it's it's quite uncomfortable, and you can't see the pattern. So it's nice to, it's just nice to hang it at your house. Okay, ikat. Okay, let me. This lady is this lady is from Flores. So we've got buna, we've got ikat. What is ikat? So, so it requires this lady. Uh, the threads to be tied and dyed and then carefully woven, taking care to line up the patterns in the thread so that the design is clearly visible. So what she's doing right now is actually, she tie certain uh, uh, threads, a section of, the, of this particular uh, uh, thread to, to create pattern. So when she dyes this cloth, the dye will not penetrate the tight part of this particular uh, textile. But it's not as simple as that because if she wants to 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 dye another part, she got to tie it up again and open it. So it's it's very complex. But don't worry about that. I don't. I cannot explain it very clearly. Uh, Google it, ikat, uh, uh, and then and then you you will find uh, so many videos on that. And this is the the end product from Flores, eastern part of Flores. That's the reason why we should uh, keep telling uh, friends we should 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 respect those weavers. Um, there is a word, Indonesian word called parajin, which is what was quite noble back then. Parajin, those who are very diligent to create something, but now uh, the, they, don't, they have lost the meaning. So parajin becomes like a laborer, like batik batik maker. They oh, the people treat them like uh, just like laborer. I can't do that. I mean, I've tried to. Uh, make batik last time, but it is it's horrible. I don't have the patience. So we have, I've shown you Sumba Textile, Flores, and now I'll show you a very nice piece from Rote Island, Island of Rote. That's uh, another shoulder cloth. So the fun part of finding Indonesian textile, you can find it almost in, 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 in other places than Indonesia. I got this in Australia a few years ago. For example, and this is also a nikat from Rote. Um, move to Lembata. It's called Kawatek. You can see on top of there, uh, mid top the bottom, global part. You see manta ray patterns there, it's like a triangle manta rays. Uh, they're not worn. Uh, they use as a dowry. It's very long and very narrow. I don't think you can wear that. Slambata. Alor. Uh, 
There's a mosque, right? You can see the mosque there? And I said, I think mosque or a church. I, I, it's hard to tell. Animals, there's gajah, an elephant. Okay, now I show, need to show a map before going to this one. Okay, Tanimbar. Where are we now? Tanimbar. Tanimbar. It's an island. I'll show you the text later. Look to your left. You see the international border, the red, the red, the red uh, lines. And on top of the red line, there's a small, small island called Kisar. So it's part of the Southern Molucas, Southern Molucas region. And you will see on top of above Tanimbar K, Irian Barat of Papua. You see the part is slightly uh, cut top that looks like uh, the head of a bird. Try to remember because I'll come back to that. So you've got Tanimbar, yeah? Tanimbar, you got Kisar, and then uh, uh, Papua. This is a piece of textile I got in Ambon a few years ago. Uh, it's a little cloth. I was told uh, it's like to cover a corpse, but I use it as a shoulder cloth, uh, as a, a scarf at, at, uh, at an event at the Textile Museum in Jakarta a few years ago. Tanimbar, now Kisar. Beautiful textile from Kisar. This is the sarong. They become quite rare now. And this is the, the men's wrap. I got them in Jakarta. Okay, I'm gonna show the map again because I'm gonna show something very nice. Okay, Irian Barat, Papua now, to the top part. Gulfing Bay area, they make very beautiful, uh, again, this work is also considered textiles, yeah? It's called Sarui, Sirui. It's a dowry, but also used as a dance apron. Imported beads from Czechoslovakia, from other islands in, in, in Indonesia, and they add cloth there to make it, to make it more interesting. I got a few in the collection. And I've shown this to some friends who drop by and they say, I have no idea about it. Yes, because back to EE's question, there's so many things that we don't know. <laughs> some people don't even know where Tanimbar is when I challenge them. Tell me where Tanimbar is. I've got no idea. So it's good for even for Indonesians to, to understand. Um, okay, before we almost done, let me go back to my father's island, Sumbawa. So I had a chance back then to uh, get uh, uh, some pieces, old pieces commissioned by the palace back then. This is a detail of a beautiful sarong um, from 19th century. This type of triangle appears in many places in Indonesia. So this could be commissioned by, by, by the palace. So I'm lucky to be able to, to get it. I mean, to buy it, to be honest. I don't like the word just acquire. I think quite pretentious. I bought it uh, there. And this is uh, another textile shown to me. I don't have it. Maybe one day I'd like to be the carer of this. Another beautiful textile. And it's called Songket. The, te the technique is songket, yeah? So it requires weavers to alternately insert gold threads in perfect order to create patterns. And the technique is called songket. We've got, sorry, we've got buna, we've got ikat, we've got tie-dye, and now we've got songket. And I was very happy to, to show this when I was there. To be honest with you, I'd like to have this, but, uh, but I think it's better for them uh, to, to to recreate. This is a challenge because how to recreate this, to find the weavers, you can do that. There's always a challenge, always a challenge. So where are we now? And I will also answer those questions. Where are we now? Where are we now? I need to show you this. Where are we now? 
Okay, this particular textile is called Lawobutu. So it um, is, is from Flores. Bajawa, to be specific, Bajawa people in Flores because Flores is so diverse. Western Flores, Central and East Flores is Bajawa, Bajawa people. And are treasured at Clan Irum. So women elder will wear Lawobutu in a ceremony for building traditional and clan houses or the construction of an ancestral shrine. So this piece was woven in keeping with the traditional textiles of Bajawan culture and commissioned by Threads of Life. It was woven by uh, this lady, Katarina Paba. I'm not sure if she's still weaving because that's the, the challenge in preserving uh, Indonesian textiles. Some weavers are no longer around. I think she's still around, but maybe it's not, it's not really, it's not weaving anymore. So in order to get that textile, I have to ask them, I have to, I have to wait actually until it was made. This is the detail showing the boats. The boat, I was told, resemble the, the, the passage of life, you know, from birth, living, and the death. Remember Tanimbar? Okay, Tanimbar, this is part of the, part of the challenge also. I'll show you the original text of Tanimbar. Where are we now? This is the antique one. I mean, if you want to promote this textile because the, uh, the uh, taste has changed and youngsters want to reach out to young people and it's even ordinary Indonesian, they, they might find it oh, just too dull, too dark. Oh, this is quite nice though when I wore it as a, as a scarf. So a member of my group, uh, she's working with uh, weavers in Tanimbar Island. Um, hold on, yeah, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Here you are. I don't say it's modern interpretation, but uh, that we use different color. Basically to make it more lively. The, 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 um, the motif are still there. I was told there are a lot of word motifs. In there, now the sample is this one. Also from Tanimba. And this is the full picture of the textile that I like so much uh, uh, woven lately. Recently, sorry. Uh, Timor, beautiful Buna. Buna is a technique. This is the, the, the design, the close up. And this is me with uh, two young guys from Yogyakarta, member of my group that uh, preserve the tradition of mixing classical batik. This one is a, a kind of contemporary with wayang motifs. I'd like to show you this because this is part of the challenge of trying to, how to appreciate a textile and how to, how would you go from here? Uh, may sound a bit cynical, but that's um, but that's me. So I'll show you this. Yeah, so this is my I'm a TV journalist. I'm a TV producer. So this is my my our trip to to Washington D.C. to 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 film uh, panel discussions. So I was wearing rang rang textile from Nusa Penida. So this kind of mindset in Indonesia, for example, oh, we've got to bring it to the world, bring it to the world. Uh, it will boost the confidence of weavers if it is shown, let's say, in Paris, in, in, in London, or in New York, or wherever. But then again, I'll, I'll have a different view of that because I think we cannot rely on the so called foreigners to do that. At the end of the day, it's up to the Indonesians to, to help preserve those, those traditions, the tradition, to buy them, to make sure that the weave are still working, the batik makers still working to, to earn some money and they need somebody to buy. You cannot walk, uh, uh, depend on, on weave, uh, 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 buyers from outside. And this, for example, I'll come back to this picture because, okay, well, down the street in Paris and then nobody stopped and asked, oh, this very treasury. Nobody asked me that question. So this is my understanding. So I think we need to reintroduce the tradition 
to Indonesians. There's nothing wrong with promoting it abroad. If nothing wrong, I'm not against that at all. But as long as we can then study, uh, we can learn, we can come up with a discussion whether it's actually effective or not. Dior, I'm not too sure. So some many discussions about that. People think, oh, okay, fine. Let's have a, an agreement. Dior must use uh, handmade endak. Endak is a, is ikat, yeah, is ikat technique in Bali. It's called endak. Uh, but then again, the question is like this. Okay, now we're going back to mass produce because can we actually ask those weavers to churn out uh, tons of of uh, 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 meters of, of 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 textile in a short time, and this. A particular textile called rang rang is problematic. Why it is problematic? Okay, rang rang is from Nusa Penida in Bali. So basically, this is an example of natural dyes uh, 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 effort to use natural dyes again because uh, Nusa Penida is so dry. Look at the beautiful color; it's so contemporary. It's actually a dress, a dress cloth, but then again, it's nice as a, just like this textile that I'm wearing. It's nice as a to use it as a as a as a uh, a scarf. So there was an a trend, I think, a few years back to promote rang rang in such big way, and then uh, certain uh, uh, companies came to Bali to uh, to to work with weavers to churn out as many rang rang as possible. And what happened is that because become overproduced and the price dropped so much, price dropped. And people in Troso, Java, have created imitation rang rang. If you go to Indonesian viewers here who been to Tamrin City, there are plenty of imitation rang rang. So the price have dropped. So efforts to actually promote something become a, a, a backfire. So that's the question that we have to be quite careful. And I'm talking uh, this kind of euphoria, sorry, a bit cynical, I guess mental of, uh, we call it the mentality of countries who have been colonized. So you need always, you need a recognition from foreigners. Uh, I'm saying to be blunt, to, from Westerners. If Westerners uh, approve or uh, appreciate, then you, you, you boost your pride. I um, totally disagree with that. Especially right now, during COVID nineteen, there's so many stories about weavers or not cannot basically cannot sell. They still can sell, but not as much before. And we need Indonesian actually to help them. There's still money going on in the country, especially in Jakarta. And we need to correct approach um, and how to to make sure that the tradition is alive. It's it's it's, it's no more to me. Time is running out. It's it's no more ceremonial. Uh, Doing this certain this party that party I mean it is not it's not it's not uh, sustainable. Uh, I hope that answer uh, uh, his question, Raki. Well, any other question before I move on to another one? Another if another question? Um, not really. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now back to the the top. Indonesia not all about batik. Okay, fine. I'm not against batik. I collect batik also. <laughs> uh, but because it's so diverse, it's so confusing. If I collect batik, I'll only focus on batik. I will not go to other islands. That, that's the danger of collecting batik because it's so complex. I'm going to show you a few pieces that I collect. Yeah, this sample of this called Piganagri batik. Look at the details. So batik later, I'll leave it to Tony yeah, to create another one. Uh, another talk. This is from Kedung Oisuchun family. It's, um, it's actually a, more like a decoration. And I love, again, collect what you like. Yeah, It's not because, uh, because I don't collect to make sure that I'll make money later on. I don't think so because those textile is in, my, in the wheel. My two nieces will get them. <laughs> Uh, I like unique pieces. This is Tokui, for example. It's, a, it's an ultra cloth. So if you go to a Chinese temple, let's say in Singapore and Malaysia, we'll see that kind of 
uh, embroidered textile imported from China in the, in the altars. But in Java, because we are so unique, so in the nation, they, they, they created on, in batik, it's batik creation uh, drawn by Javanese. That's why the Chinese figure looks so funny, but that's the beauty of it. And that's Indonesia. Um, okay, I like batik also. Okay, when I work, when I go somewhere, uh, Okay, this is my interview with the finance minister recently, in addition finance minister. Our batik, and we talk about batik briefly with, with, with her. And this is the kind of interesting, uh, interesting uh, because of COVID-19, so and, I mean, Singapore, I can't go to, you know, I can't go to Indonesia, we agreed to have this. And during the, the interview, she got a call. Hey, I've got to take this call, it's from the president. Okay, fine. So it was, we paused for a few minutes, for I think for 10 minutes, uh, and then we continue. Uh, this is the fun part of that. Uh, you can't see the batik I was wearing, but uh, maybe just top part of it. Another sample when I went in Estimo, I interviewed the former president, uh, prime minister of Singapore, uh, of, of uh, Estimo and also Nobel Prize winner, Ramos Horta. Look at the batik. I like wearing batik, yes. And then another sample. This is very cute because I think good quality batik is uh, make difference, and his pet deer. He loved it. I think he thought that it is uh, uh, it's leaves, right? So <laughs> during the interview, he was munching on my leaf and on, on my batik, and then his stuff was so scared of him. So <laughs> he tried to intervene. So during the interview, I was trying to oh please please uh, baby Bambi go away go away. But anyway, he eventually went away after finding out that actually he could not eat my batik, the leaves. Uh, one, one more sample, for example, uh, two more, I'll give you two more. My interview with the Lut Panjaitan, he was then the, the uh, security minister, he's now the maritime minister of Indonesia. I used to, uh, used to for interviews like that, I would, I would wear my best batik. And this one, my interview with, uh, the Sea of Garuda, another uh, 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 Zoom interview. So yes, I think that's that's about it actually. Yeah, there was another. Uh, I think I think so far that's about it. I can show you more pictures as um, as we answer some questions, perhaps. So where are we now? Yes, pandem pandemic is a challenge. We need to buy. I mean, I've talked to 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 to. Uh, some batik makers to we first the challenge is there the challenge is there we just cannot say okay let's go back because we have promoted this piece of uh, textile in in paris let's let's uh, hope that uh, the parisian or the french people or people in london the us will buy those textiles. i don't think so i don't think that's the case the indonesians should help them um i'll, I'll give it back to you tony yeah uh Yes, thanks so much for sharing, uh, Bang Lewa. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, I think, yeah, you feel free to unmute yourself and ask the questions. Uh, if you are shy, of course, uh, <laughs> the chat box is available. <laughs> yep. Uh, he was saying, uh, yes, you answered the question, but there will always be more follow-ups. <laughs> yeah, I think follow-up is important because I think one, one thing I learned uh, when the Director General of, of, uh, of Culture uh, came to Singapore, Indonesia, to, uh, to Singapore to give a talk at one university here, and he, he, uh, he confessed that even at the, that the Director General, many people dealing with, dealing with uh, a culture, the, the background can be uh, chemical engineering, for example. So uh, there's still a lack of effort, uh, concerted effort by the, the government to basically have a better idea on how to, to make sure that tradition is, 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 is kept alive. We also, we always, especially in the, the social media era right now, people Will, will, will calculate how many likes you have, for example, and this UNESCO uh, recognition uh, of batik as a, as as a, 
and it actually has not changed much. Uh, we using that that excuse. Oh, it's been recognized by UNESCO, but that uh, but then what? What's the follow up? I haven't seen anything concrete actually in 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 in, in general. So I think that's a challenge. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. There are a lot of uh, thank you notes and his uh, wonderful presentations and. There's uh, one question uh, from Miss Tadi. How do you distinguish artificial and original weave in Tamrin? In <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm sure we question that. Um, um, it's a simple question, but not so simple because you need actually, you need to train your eyes. You need to train your eyes. For example, I mean, you, you can't see the zoom, zoom does not really reflect on the natural. Uh, you can see the flaws, or they're totally different. I, I cannot give you example of, of that, I have to say. Um, um, I think uh, what I can say, maybe it will answer your question, yeah? It will answer, may answer your question. It goes back to reading and reading and reading again. So I would recommend this book, for example, as a beginner, if you can have it. Uh, it's about Southeast Asian textile, but 90% Indonesian textile. So you can learn about uh, Indonesian textile there. And, and by learning, by reading, by comparing, by, by buying what you like, and then you can, you can, you, you can actually uh, start understanding the difference and between uh, the fake or not so fake. So, but the term fake is also quite, it can be quite problematic because collectors, then some collectors not all tend to look down on new textiles. I don't think collectors, some collectors will value this or will value this, these textiles because just woven maybe five, 10 years ago, they may have certain ideas. And I need to show you this, yeah. As a collector, I also learned a few things. Uh, I used to have this piece of textile, a beautiful textile from Sulawesi. This is from in my house in Kuala Lumpur back then. But I sold that textile thinking this is new, that is new. So I asked a friend of mine who, who was active on eBay to sell it. And I regret it because then again, this is a beautiful textile and they can't recreate this. The, 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 the weavers, the current weavers in, uh, um, uh, who work for Trust of Life, they cannot, they cannot recreate this kind of pattern. So, so it's sayang. Um, Understanding textile is also about, about learning, about reading, about you have to read as many books as possible. Another sample of books that you might want to buy is this one. And also this one. I hope that answer your question, but uh, I don't have the exact list, list samples of that, but let's say if you, maybe this, because this can guide you, if you go to Tamrin City, Find a similar textile like this. You can see it's it's, it's it's rough. It's quite rough, and this one is is made of silk. So it's, it's uh, you can see the the difference is 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 quite glaring actually. I am actually uh, very curious. Uh, how do you uh, like? Do you have like any set criteria in terms of like what you want to purchase and uh, collect or? Is there like a certain expector, anything that sparks joy, you will get it. So, um, as long as you have the money, <laughs> I'm always <laughs> well. This one, I'm constantly bro, for example. But uh, I just uh, this is from uh, 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 an advice from a dear friend, a uh, 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 senior uh, art dealer in Singapore, Georgia. She owns Patiana in Tanglin Shopping Center. She just she told me, collect what you like. So, what, whatever you like, I mean. You, you, you buy certain things because this particular collector has that or this. No, it's not, you can't do that. Just collect what you like, collect what you like. I think as simple as that, it, 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 it's, 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 it helps you rather than go with the flow. I don't go with the flow. I mean, Kalimantan textile, for example, I, I, I don't go with the flow. It, it's quite unique. And this one, uh, this beaded textile, uh, beaded pieces from Papua. I don't go with the flow, just call it, oh, that's fine. I mean, and then I, I got some and I, I, I read books on that. 
uh, go to museum in Jakarta to see some samples also. So collect what you like. Some old, uh, I think I saw uh, 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 a question about this. Yes. About how old is it? How old, yeah. How old are some of these techniques that you mentioned? Hmm. Batik, maybe, I don't know, earlier than fourth century, maybe, Buna, um, Ikat, nobody knows. <laughs> Sorry, nobody knows. Nobody knows, actually. Tony, can you answer that? Uh, I think the answer is on the book. <laughs> 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 Lewa, I, have, I have a question. Uh, uh, for example, about the Rang Rang. Yeah, uh, yeah. This is from Nusa Penida. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not mistaken. The Rang Rang is more popular on the 20th, uh, the, 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 2000, the year of 2000. And, and uh, you know, it's not so long. So yeah. I was thinking about it was... I, I have many of rang rang. Okay, okay. But the, the 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 pattern is you know from from it's not much pattern. Uh, it is look like it's just like uh, like you know the pattern like this. Uh, the difference is just the size, and yeah. uh, sometimes they make it more bigger, more. Yeah. Uh, it's just the size of the the square. That's right. But That's there right. is no much um, variety on the pattern. Do you think that they need help from maybe the experts like you to help them to the, to the wafer to make the other kind of pattern with the same technique maybe? Okay, so basically, uh, thank you so much for the question. So this is a challenge. Uh, I, I mentioned Threads of Life many times because I've, I've known them since 2002, more than 19 years, so they, they're preserving, for example, they work with weavers in Timor. So the, the beautiful textile, this textile I've shown you, this is from, from, from uh, that, 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 that is nice. Yeah, that's that's very nice. That's, that's very that's cute. Yeah. So I think what they do is uh, um, they don't commission anything, just okay, just weave whatever you like using your grand uh, knowledge given by, by, by your grandmother. And going back to, to Rang Rang, um, there are not many samples in, in books either. So I think I think they they have old samples from original weavers. So just stick to it. So you you create uh, you weave again, but and you do, I don't give you restriction on what kind of motifs. But I think it looks like from samples that I've seen they're more geometric like this, right? It, it's yeah, it's, it's it's like that. Uh, this is this is the danger of of for example uh, of trying to. Uh, encourage people to diversify because I'm more into, especially right now, uh, for example, in, in, in Timor, for example, uh, one, one, word, one good example. So I heard that many uh, designers from Surabaya, they came to West Timor to commission we first to create motif, which, which, not, which, just, which actually do not originate from the area. Uh, nothing wrong with that, but um, in the process, uh, the old motif, the original old motifs are lost, uh, uh, have been lost because they are in the process of, of being lost. So that, that's the danger of, of, of doing that. Um, um, I'll give you one sample of this Lawa Butu, for example. Yeah? Um, it's a beautiful textile, so everything is there. Uh, but I haven't seen uh, samples that old old pieces that look like this. So now, when it comes to uh, preservation, I think it's better to just leave uh, the weavers' uh, freedom to interpret the uh, the textile, or you can show them the old pieces. So, um, Timor, for example, yeah. Going back to this. As a collector, to see this kind of color, uh, this is okay. But Timor textiles right now, uh, the colors are more electric than this, so it gives you a headache. Basically, what the hell is that? Why so 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 colorful? That's because there's a lack of good quality uh, threads. And I, I rem if I remember correctly, 
uh, even threats are organized by so-called mafia. So access to threats, good quality threats is, is a problem. Uh, so we have, at the same time, you want to preserve, we want to give a reverse freedom to, uh, to continue the, the process, but at the same time, there are so many obstacles going on uh, in many parts of the, of the country. And I don't get, I don't have the example, but I'm going, I'll go back to this, yeah? Because I've seen the new samples of, of, of Ikat from Bangka or uh, South Sumatra. They cannot recreate that full stop. It's still being made, but yeah, they cannot recreate the Ikat pattern. They, they cannot, they cannot, they cannot. I've been asking, I've seen, I've seen samples, they're just so uh, rough. I mean, if I still using my, stick to my mindset as a collector, I was say, oh, that's rubbish because it's, it's just so ugly. But now we can't, I can't do that. The fact that it's still being woven is already almost like a miracle. So there's so many things we've got to do as, as a collector also to, to be able to, to change the mindset because again, I'm going back to uh, certain collectors, certain researchers who think that everything should have a meaning. Everything should have, have links to royal family. Not necessarily. Um, because as place right now, right now, the fact that they're still being woven, I think we should appreciate them. I hope that answers your question. Sorry, a bit <laughs> long-winded. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. Unless you want the commission, you can actually for, for batik makers, I think it's quite easy. Just show them, okay, tolong, please, uh, can you recreate this pattern as long as it's not very complex? I think they can do that. Central Java Moti, for example. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's quite easy. It's amazing presentation. Thank you so much. I hope I don't go, go too long with it. I want to show, okay, I, I want to show you a few things before that. Uh, from Lina, uh, 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 yes, the updates on the... Uh... Okay. The weavers on the other islands also having trouble to get threats and supplies. What can we do to help? What can we do to help? I think, again, this is the problem with Indonesia because it's, everything is fragmented. And then we got, uh, uh, I can, um, okay, I need to go back to this, yeah? What can we do to help? <laughs> what can we do to help? To help is to buy, as simple as that. <laughs> I think as simple as that. Uh, okay. This piece, for example, from Tanimbar. So, because it's a struggle to 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 get good quality threads. So this this the threads were dyed in Java. So the the natural dyes and then sent to Tanimbar to be to be woven by by the weavers there. What can we do to help? I think um, it's a tough question to to answer actually. To tell, if I'm I'm telling you. Um, I don't have the answer. I think, again, going back to re-educating Indonesia about their own culture, the diversity, and we, I don't think we can break that, uh, 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 the, the threat mafia, but before that, is James there? Yeah, I mean, James is still here. James, can, can you unmute James, please? If you know, he, he might be able to, to answer uh, Lynette's, uh, Lynette's, uh, Linnell, uh, question. James? Hi, James. Yeah, um, yes, I'm here. How are you? Uh, um, okay, there's a question by Linnell, good friend, my good friend in Singapore. So, because of difficulties in getting, uh, James is based in, in, in Timor, he's a Timor guy, Timor boy. Uh, how can we help actually to, 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 uh, the weavers? despite a lack of good quality uh, 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 threats. Can you offer some thoughts? Uh, yes, uh, but the, the real problem, uh, the local we first face is the supply, the supplies of the threats because now uh, we have so much threat from China it's very, what to say, uh, the car is so bright and very, it's very low quality when uh, 
you not you not take care well it will so easy to uh getting darker on sometimes it will it's is it's easy to uh what to say gampang noda begitu okay it's, is it is yeah. it pain eh? okay yeah okay. and then what you can help us is i think it's about the market the supplies from the market because now in timor and many places in indonesia the local wafer they uh, start to leave the local process like uh make the thread from the uh cotton cotton fiber yeah so we just depend on the thread supplies from the market and what market uh, give us is the very low quality of threads so maybe from the government or the uh they who uh sell the threads maybe we depend we 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 give our hope to them to supply us the best the better quality because we have no uh connection to the local wafer they have no connection to the better threads thanks james so thank you so much james thank you so much so linel i hope that answered your question because again the, the approach is so fragmented so we depend on there's so many groups we, we work with different different island different refers in different islands but i think people always try to look at the government what going to do we don't really grow cotton for example uh so i have some I have some ngo that are growing uh, start to grow their own cotton right now uh we say have to import good quality one so this is actually uh more like a homework uh perhaps groups and and uh, uh, uh collectors can help but then again to unite them is quite tough because among collectors they have to too busy with themselves i don't think they want to share their own collection either to discuss this uh yeah it's a, it's a tough question to 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 answer but um i hope that by for example my group and others we can approach i think our group, our plan is to our aim is to approach the government we've been talking to them actually to tell them uh how what to do what what is the best best approach uh james show something isn't it can can you uh yeah in your screen yes yes so i guess is 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 the type of uh uh, uh uh threads that which are now available very very electric yeah okay ali now let's answer your question it's a homework basically it's work in progress we don't know the answer right now but that's been a problem yeah and I, I'm, a, I'm a collector to the, to the example sometimes jace me show, show pictures of of timor textile i got a headache because of the colors the colors i got a headache i, I know what you're talking about <laughs> i've seen those um when i've been in flores and in uh timor i've bought some cotton weaving yarns like un undyed and i noticed that the stamp is that they're coming from Bali. Is there any way we can get a supply chain going from Bali to get these weavers proper yarn? Let me get back to you on that. Uh, threads of life again, because I know them. They, of course, they, yeah. yeah. They, they grow, they, grow uh, uh, they have their own supply. And and my friend, uh, Yasinta, the Tanimba girl, also have supplies from Java. I think it's about, uh, it's about network basically, so. Uh, but let me get back to you on that to find out more. And I heard uh, uh, Toraja Melo, for example, uh, it, it grows cotton. It grows mm. cotton in in Lembata. As it, as, a, as someone should start, I think they're starting. I think they're starting. They it, it, there needs to be some kind of local supply chain. It's they shouldn't be going to China. <laughs> yeah, because of the mafia. Actually, that's what I've been told. And there's uh, the the it's been controlled by almost like cartel. 
I can't tell who they are, but they've they been hearing the same story over and over about that. That's why you got you cannot get you, you can't get access to better quality textile unless you do your own, your own project. Mm, mm. You go to the market as you see. You saw in, in Timor, for example, you see, ah, what, the, what is this? <laughs> Those uh, bright yellow. Uh, you you it, see them all lined up in the market. It's like fluorescent yellow, mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it makes you not want to buy those textiles because this color, even though the weaving is nice, the colors are so bad. <laughs> yeah, I do understand. And I've been slapping my face. Okay, don't stop thinking like, you're not a collector. You also need to preserve that. But then again, okay, fine. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. It's very tough. It's very tough. I don't mind this. This is a natural a chemical, but because it doesn't have to be that, that bright, but this is nicely done. This is the tie yeah, from Bali, for example. This is one, one good example of, 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 of uh, a good quality chemical dyes because chemical dyes entered the archipelago, I think, in the 19th century already, used in Timor, maybe earlier than that. Yeah. Mm. Buna actually much brighter, much nicer with synthetic dyes, for example. Mm. <laughs> good quality synthetic dyes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's uh, five o'clock and a lot of people are kind of like leaving. So uh, <laughs> let me just like wrap up the session first and then uh, we can just hang out uh, informally if anyone has any more questions for Lewa. So once again, thank you everyone for joining us today. And thank you Bang Lewa for uh, sharing all the beautiful uh, textiles. Uh, I'm certain that most of us are high right now. We are tripping on textiles and uh yes uh thank you so much for the books uh, recommendations as well i believe uh, a lot of people are uh can't wait to dive deep uh into indonesian textiles oh but yes uh, can i just stop you just i forgot to mention this this is uh, my group yes. uh, that i founded was try indonesia because we want to be different we don't want to be like a a, a talk shop and this is our first project book on wearing Indonesian textile. So this answer your question about, it's not all about batik because we've got textiles from uh, this is Kalimantan, uh, Java, and how to wear ulos also there. Yeah. So we're very proud of it. Thank you. So uh, this also uh, answer the question of Audrey, if anyone who would like to wear textiles uh, on like daily on a daily basis they can uh, use the book as a reference it's a really good book and yes uh yeah do remember to follow us in our gallery across all, over our social media and do subscribe to our newsletter and yeah feel free to reach out to us if you have any comments or suggestions of uh what you want to see in the next talk and uh, future events so yes thank you everybody and have a great day <laughs>